temptation
welcome you, Holy Spirit. Provide the spirit, and I will open up and time. You provide the fire, and I provide the sacrifice. You provide the spirit.
this morning. We wait on you. of my enemies I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief I raise a hallelujah my weapon is my melody
louder than the unbelief. Sing a little louder. My weapon is a melody. Sing a little louder. Heaven comes to fight for me. The King is alive I'm gonna sing In the middle of the storm Louder and louder You're gonna hear my praises roar Up from the ashes Hope will arise Death is defeated The King is alive
your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Hello. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Sunday service. Um, I'd like to give you a special welcome if you are joining us for the first time. Could you just slip up your hand? There's a gentleman over here. Uh, someone on that side. Okay, could we please give them a warm welcome? The ushers will come and give you a card to fill out. So if you could do that and return it to them. The ushers are also coming around to collect the tithe and offering. So if you need a tithe envelope, just raise your hand and someone will come to you. A few announcements for this week. On Tuesday, the 20th of Feb, at 7 p.m., we will have our Steps of Faith course. Uh, so this is a course for all believers wanting to learn the how-tos of Jesus' ministry together. So on Tuesday, at 7 p.m., the 20, 20th of Feb. Uh, if you're interested, you can register online or at the back. On Wednesday, the 21st of Feb, women will be meeting for care group, as always. So ladies, if you're available, at 10 p.m. on Wednesday, the 21st of Feb. Friday, the 23rd of Feb, Youth Zone will be meeting. So this is at 7 p.m. So youth on Friday, this Friday, are at 7 p.m. On Saturday, the 25th of Feb, the men will be meeting for men's fellowship at 3.30 p.m. So if you're interested, you could speak to Jace, and that's on Saturday, the 23rd of Feb, at 3.30 p.m. On Sunday, the 26th of Feb, the women will be having their Connect to Women gathering. So this is especially for ladies who, don't, who are unable to make it, rather, on Wednesday. This is for you. Um, it's a Connect Women's Gathering for ladies uh, to join in this month as they explore extravagant worship. So ladies, this coming Sunday, the 26th of Feb, at 3 p.m., if I'm not mistaken. Uh, that's all I have to announce. Uh, kiddies, I think you're going to Sunday school. If you could please stand and I can pray for you. Lord, we come before you today, Lord. Father, I pray for these kiddies, Lord. Lord, I pray that whatever is learned in Sunday school, Lord, take deep root in their heart, Lord. Lord, I pray that their heart would grow curious to know you more, Jesus. Lord, and I pray that all the influences of this world, Lord, they won't deter them from knowing you, Lord. I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Good morning. How good to see you sitting in the presence of the Lord. And you look good. You sound good. And you're listening a little louder. And you're singing a little louder. Hopefully, you will have a pleasant day. And also, keep close to the Lord. Now, I am um, going to speak a little bit on um, uh, the announcement that Chrissy made just now on next week Sunday when the women are getting together. The question is who can come? All the ladies, the youth, and the little children, you can all come. And, um, but make sure that you give your names in and there's a cost to it just for your food. What you should bring on that day? You should bring ribbons, if you have a flag, if you don't, if you have a scarf, Punjabi scarf, bring it along. If you play tamarind, bring it along. And um, we're going to do worship, extravagant worship. Do you remember the lady? She had expensive perfume. She brought it and she, she thought Jesus was worth it. She broke it at his feet and she anointed him. Let us today give our utmost best 
to the Lord with your body, mind, and spirit. So we will be doing uh, worship with the flags and other things, and let's fill the present. Let's fill this place up with the presence of the Lord. How to dress? For those of you who got semicircle skirts and dresses that are flare that you can move around uh, easily, please put one on with the tights. Why are you laughing? Why are you laughing? <laughs> yeah, and um, also we're going to do a little, little short, short demo on what you can expect on that day. But here's uh, Cohen. Are you here, right? Your family is not here. We, are they here? Dad. Welcome, Dad, for the first time. Uh, yeah, we, we give you a warm welcome and we wish, we wish you enjoyed worship with us. Now, we don't have any details for you, Cohen. We are having a newcomer's class here, um, breakfast, and we don't have any contact. Can you please leave a contact detail after the meeting for us? But good to have your dad Hope you enjoy the service. So we're just going to do a little, little, little demo. So you will have an idea. So we're going to use, uh, we're going to enhance our worship. Instead of just standing all year round like that, we're going to enhance our worship. And I'm going to give out some notes. And in those notes, you'll find out that there's a scripture for different colors and, and of the flags and what it means. Now, there's a study you can do. For example, when you're feeling low and you're sick, you take an olive piece of cloth, you put it close to you, and it's, it keeps on healing. Remember the dove? So we're going to do something like this. I lift my eyes up to the mountain. Where does my help come from? You know, and it uh, makes you feel good when you do something for the Lord. So yeah, I come up there, and on that day, I might have some flags for sale. It's my friend, and she um, left it with me and said, if anybody needs it, that's the way she helps out. So I'm going to give up things like this for you to pick it up. I mean, where's my three girls that are going to demonstrate uh, this thing? Yeah. Yeah. I'm done. We just want to show you. Last week we had baptism, so can these people pick up your, your, your cards here, your certificates? Kajal, Allison, Klinsman, and Tashmir. Okay, when you're done with the meeting today. Yeah, there are one, uh, two announcements. One about the breakfast. What's the catch? There's no catch. All we want to know is if you're around, are you part of this church? And if you've been here for a while and you want to be part of the church, then what we'd like to do is meet you. And because we are meeting you in the morning, we didn't have breakfast, so we didn't have breakfast together. 
you don't need, you can fast if you want, but we'd like to see you. So come uh, on the 24th, that's this, this Saturday morning at 9 o'clock, but please fill out your name so we know we got some eggs for you, you know. <laughs> Otherwise, we're going to run short here. The other one is the Tuesday night we have our Vibe school starting again, and we were doing um, small ministry teams. We're going to finish that up. So 20th, don't forget. Let's beat the hair together. All right, let's get into this. Let me pray first. Again, Lord, thank you for being with us, leading us, teaching us. We sit at your feet again, and we are thankful that you are here with us. We ask that you will teach us your ways. We bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Now that you're reading the Bible, and hopefully you are reading your Bible, every week we are sending out uh, some Bible reading, and we do that for a special reason that, and as I will explain just now, the Word of the Lord is key to anything that you ever need in your entire life. First thing, the thing that God began the whole world with right in the very beginning, was the Word. He spoke His Word, and things that were not existing came to pass. And even in your life today, the living Word that is Jesus is living in your heart, but He speaks every time. And the way He would speak is that when you, you give Him something to deal with, in your heart, in your life, as you read the Bible. I was talking to somebody yesterday, and that this person had been around for a bit, not from here, when I, I just spoke to this person. And they, they've been in the Lord for a while, and now suddenly he got very excited. He got excited, all because he was studying a little bit. And all this time, he was doing none of that. I would imagine that he was not even reading too much of the Bible. So he suddenly found, wow, what a love this is. What an excitement this is. So uh, I hope that is your, your uh, experience as well. I mean, I became a Christian. I was a real hard person to come to the Lord. And I became a Christian by reading a Bible. A friend who gave it to me was not a Christian. And uh, I was an atheist, but I read the book. And God began to deal with stuff in my life. Amazing, I didn't go to church. So the word of the Lord is very, very important to me. And um, yeah, it's still important and I'm still studying. Yeah, I love God's word. Now, if you, have, if you discover God's word, you'll find this. You'll have such a passion for the Lord. And I think people that don't have a passion for the Lord, is, they stay away from the book. Yeah, they stay away from the word. So, the Word is the seed. The Word is the seed. And then, of course, as the scriptures talk about a harvest, 30 or 60 or 100 times, 100 fold. It's not 30%, 60%, 100%. It's 30 times. If you get one time, and next time is 100%, right? 30 like that, I don't know. Figure it out, man. I can't do the maths. There's a lot of percentages there. Just the minimal amount that God wants to uh, put your way, bring your way, is 30-fold. Imagine if, if the word of the Lord is given space in your life to produce a hundredfold. Imagine. Mm, I love your enthusiasm. Okay. All right. So, you're praying about stuff. How... How does God answer your prayer? How do we get answers to our prayer? Like when you're praying about, let's say you're praying about a job or a car or, or something. How does God answer you? Does he like suddenly send the wonderful yellow convertible through the sky? No, he doesn't do that. What he does is the answer comes 
in seed form. Seed. The word. As a pastor, if I want to see some things happening in our church that's not really happening, then I'll want to seed the church. Now that might have gone over your head, but that's fine. To seed the church. For me to have a harvest of a people who would want to study the word of the Lord or want to do the stuff that God's calling, I will talk about it even though we are not doing it at the moment. Why? Because that's seed that is being planted. That's my job. You might not know that, but that's my job. There's a lot of things that you don't know that I do behind the scenes, behind your back. No. But God gives answers in seed form. Now, it's a secret. It's a secret. Look at this text in Mark 11, 24. Therefore, you read the whole context to find out what that therefore is there for. I tell you, Jesus speaking, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe, have faith that you have received it, and it will be yours. When you pray, faith comes, and you will receive it. When you pray, God gives you the seed, you would have it, and then it will manifest. It might not manifest immediately, but it will manifest. So, Jesus is expecting us to be asking. If you don't ask, you receive not. Right? So we're not saying you've got to pray just to get holy and get better with God and God gives you, you know, you butt him up and then you, no. You pray for your own self. You pray for your sake. You pray about bringing answers into your life, into your home, into your family. You don't pray, nothing happens. You don't read, you don't get any fruit out of it. The seed comes as you read. And even when I was not a Christian and I was reading the book, God would use this book to put a seed in me. When I talked to him about getting rid of that thing that I was doing, God would, God would answer me before I went to church, by the way. Some people might not like that theology, but I'm telling you, that's it. For me, that, that's how it was, and I'm glad it happened like that. Nobody could talk to me about the Lord and hear it, but the Lord wanted me. So, put the book in my hand. And the person who did it was an unsaved guy. Wasn't a Christian. He's still not a Christian. So, so God answers by giving us a seed. What is that seed? It's the word of the Lord. And what happens when you get it? That's why I'm trying to get you to read. And as you read, something is going to happen. Faith comes. Listen to this one in Romans 10, verse number 17. Consequently, reading NIV, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. And the message could be what you're being preached now, what is being preached now, or the gospel as you hear it, and the message is heard, and the message is heard through the word. And this word is a very different word in the original. It's the word rhema. Rhema is very different. Rhema word comes as we pray and God gives us an answer. It's, 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 it's a revelation. God takes the word and out of that suddenly something pops into your mind. The spirit of the Lord will take you. It's like a sword, a sword of the spirit. God gives you a word. And believe you me, you have been listening to this. You have. You heard it, but some of you have ignored it. So your answers have been going past you. Hmm. You missed the boat. But it's coming. It got, it is, you prayed, you sought the Lord, the answer came. But you're looking for the manifestation of it. The manifestation don't come like that. It first comes as a seed. Seed. It's a thought. It comes into your mind. It comes into your heart. And that's what he's saying here. Faith comes. How does faith come? Faith comes and faith goes. And faith also grows. See? 
So you must stay in the word. The faith comes from hearing the message. Reading the message, and the, and the message is the word of the Lord, the gospel, or just reading it. And the message is heard through the word of Christ. So the Spirit of the Lord uses the Bible, the Bible, and brings out something from there for you, your sake. And then you take that, because that, by the way, is the evidence that you're going to get it. Going back to the first, verse, uh, first scripture we read, it says this, Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe you received it. See, the word comes, the rhema, you get it. Believe you receive When you receive it, it's not going to manifest immediately, but it's yours. You got it. You can take that to the bank. You got it. As far as God is concerned, you have it. Now, if this is not your experience, I'm trying to seed you so you can get into this. When I'm dead and gone, don't say I didn't tell you. Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11. 1. Now, faith is being sure of what we hope for. What is faith? Faith is being sure of what we hope for. In the, in, and I, uh, King James says, faith is a substance. Faith is a substance. Substance is something you can hold, you can touch, you can feel, you can see. Faith, you don't see it, but faith, according to the scriptures, is being sure of what we are hoping for or praying for and certain of what we do not see. If you, if you look at it in the King James, you read, it reads, faith is a substance. Faith is a substance of things hoped for. And then it says, the evidence, the evidence of things not seen. What is faith? Faith, cut to the chase, is the evidence of things hoped for. What is the evidence? God, you praying about something, God wants to give you that. And so God gives you the evidence. What's the evidence? Faith is the evidence. So you go before God in the courts of heaven. You stand there with the evidence. And the evidence is the faith. You have it. You got it. You can stand there. I tell you, a lot of these things in our, in our lives have been built and put together because we have the evidence. I remember building this um, uh, 20 odd years ago. We didn't have money. There was no money. There's like, look there, there's nothing there. That, that could not have built this. But what we did have is the faith. What is faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence. I saw the church before I saw the church. Hmm. Now, you might not get there full blown, but you will have to go there and start with Sparrow wings, slowly. Believe God for simple things. And uh, I remember believing God on those days for 10 rand eh, to buy some clothing. 10 rand, where are you going to buy clothing in town? But I went with 10 rand to buy clothing, and I came back with some stuff. Didn't steal it, I got it. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Now we need millions to make something happen, right? Hello? How are you going to get it? How, uh, how is anything going to happen to you? You might want to get me to pray for you. I might not be the right person. You might not get your neighbor to pray for you or the other lady who will pray and tell, Sami, tell us. <laughs> that won't work either. You understand? There are a lot of witchcraft happening even in the church. I want you to learn how to go get something from God. It doesn't bring it waltzing down from heaven, but it gives you a seed, and the seed comes from your own going through the scriptures, what we're giving you every week to read. This, it sounds drudgery, and that's just it's like you have to read. You have to read it. I'm telling you that what God does, he takes this substance and he puts it in your spirit. And then from time to time, a sword comes out. God gave you that evidence. He gave you that. You can talk about anything, healing, anything. Same way. God brings it. It's, the evidence is the proof, the conviction. You have a conviction. 
that God is going to do something. When we started to build here, we didn't have the money, as I said. And then, um, I mean, there were like, I don't know how many trucks around bringing things. Bricks were going on. I don't know how many people working in so many different spots. And I had to believe God on a daily basis and on a weekly basis for money to pay all these people and never stop one day from working. And there were times that were really, very, very, very uh, tough and critical. And, uh, and there would be those that would tell me, why don't you stop, man? Hmm? Pastor, why, man? They don't have the money, man. How are you doing this thing, man? Why you don't wait for God to come? I said, no, this is what the Lord said to me. When he said to me, you present your cup, I'll fill it. Hmm? That's what he said. Your cup of need. You present that before me, I'll fill it. Who am I going to believe now? Believe these people that are saying that? Or believe, you know, what's going on around me? I'm thinking, how on earth am I going to go up there? Back 20 years ago, the roof alone came to about 350,000. It's worth millions now. But then, 350 was like millions. But the Lord didn't allow me to stop one day. Not one day. And we don't owe the bank. I love your enthusiasm. You're excited people. You're very excited people, you know. When I was dying, you looked like that when I was living. <laughs> yeah, see, that's why it doesn't depend on you. It depends on all of us, yes, but it depends on what God's saying and doing. Do you understand? In your life, things are really, must be really tough, I know. But I'm telling you, you and I, while we're living in the desert, God is able to furnish a table. Water out of the rock. Manna falling from heaven. What do you think? So evidence. It's a belief that is being examined, tested for validity. God is going to give you this thing. And, and God did fill the cup. He said to me very clearly, you don't present your cup, you're not going to get that filled. So every day I had to say, Lord, please, I'm in trouble here. I'll be at 7 o'clock in the morning waiting for everybody to start and get, get going. And every time we had a need, I'd turn around and say, you got money for this guy. And sure enough, there was some money there. And that I didn't know anything else. I had no idea about anything else. All I'm telling you is what God was doing on a daily basis. God's able to take care of you. So, therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you received it, and it will be yours. Look at James 1, James 1, chapter 1, verse number 6. We've got to ask in faith, but when he asks, he must believe and not doubt, because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. You know, the wave doesn't know whether to come or go. You know that. Have you noticed? You go and stand there. Sometimes I see people that sorry stand there. They know it's going to come, but they know also it's going to go. If you knew tsunami is coming, you wouldn't stand there, right? But you know, the wave is like that. It's like, you know, it's going to go, come, the cars are blowing, going. Uh, you know, you can't get anything like that. So we need to grow in faith. And the way you and I will grow in faith is we stay in this book. There is nothing else outside of God's word. Nothing. Here is life. But when he asks, he must believe and not doubt because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. Next verse. That man should not think he will receive anything from the Lord. See, this is clear, isn't it? Don't doubt. He is double-minded. He's a double-minded man unstable in all he does. So we need to grow and become stable people. And he said, as I said, I was talking to this guy and, and he was like so wild about God's word. I'm wondering what he was doing all this time. 
You can listen to me all the time, but if you don't put to practice, nothing's going to work for you. Do you understand this? It's hard for me to even say that to you because I love you so much. But it's because I love you so much, I want to tell you. I'm not with you 24-7. You're with yourself, I think, 24-7. Yeah, so I don't want to be a double-minded man, which makes me unstable in all I do. No. Hebrews 4.16, God is encouraging us, Hebrews 4.16, encouraging us to come before his throne of grace. So, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16, and it says, Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Where are you going to go when you have time, when you have need? When, where are you going to go? Now the question is, where do I get the evidence? I want the evidence, right? I'm glad you asked. Where am I going to get the evidence? There are a few sources, a few places. Firstly, firstly, you must find specific promises in the Word. You know that little box that you have? That's not always a lucky box, but... If that's all you read, then you're, you're in trouble. People like Facebook, you know, language, they give one, one text, make it in bright colors, you read it. Well, that's your text for today. It may be. But you and I must eat. You can't live on just one, one toast bread. Eh? You've got to eat. You've got to sustain yourself by taking maybe a chapter and read. Maybe out of the chapter you read a couple of good paragraphs from there. Just read to understand. Even if it's one paragraph, read to understand it. And ask the Lord. I have now a, a whole another system where I'm, I'm writing down the whole text that I'm given. I'm, and I then have to pray that text and then and write my own implications, what I find in that text. Write it all out. Write it all out. And I'm finding that whole exercise a very, very exciting exercise. I think it's important for us, all of us, because the, you have to eat. I can't say you're going home after today, this morning, and after my talking about food so much, you don't eat at all. You, you will go home to eat, right? Whatever leftovers you got from yesterday, and that's in our life, whatever left is any good, then we'll eat. But we have to eat. And we have to eat this. If you want to find help, eat. Kalala beta. find specific promises find it in the word of the Lord and, and then you base your requests on that word you pray pray the word in your life in, in, in Luke 11 you'll read a whole lot of asking and seeking knocking and it says which of your fathers when your son wants fish you give him a snake eh? oh, I one snake of devil. Here's one cobra. Eat. Hey, God don't do like that. He gives you your specific, whatever you pray for, he's going to give you that. One fellow prayed for, he wanted to go and do missionary work, going up and down, and he wanted a bike. He said, ask the Lord for a bike. After a month or so, he, he didn't get it. He went back to the Lord. He says, you know what, I, I'm walking my shoes. The leather is all gone now. You know? Going to visit people, take care of them. I, I need a bike. He says, yeah, yeah, but yeah. And I wanted to ask you, what bike you want? <laughs> how, there are, how many bikes are there? You know, which one you want? You want a racing bike? You want a two-speed, five-speed? What, 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 what you want a mountain bike? You, what, what bike you want? You see, you've got to be specific. When you are specific, that shows you the faith. I wrote a whole lot of things when I wanted a wife. Ten things I want to see. These ten things. On the top of the list was spirituality. You know, seeking the Lord, serving the Lord, seeking the kingdom, you know, wanting to go with me wherever I think God wants us to go. It was like on top of the list. Ten things. I don't know if, uh, I, I think there must have been beauty somewhere, eh? 
in the page, but it was not top of the list, maybe in the middle of the list. But God gave me all of that, including all of the other stuff, in my wife Rani. Hmm? We're now together for 40 something years. Nice, huh? <laughs> if you ask for a fish and you catch a good one, hmm. God answers specific prayer. So you bathe yourself in the specific promises of God. How? You're praying, you're reading, you're praying, you're reading. The simple things, man. Those are the basics. You stay away from the book, you'll find that you don't have any substance. But what are you going to pray? What you heard somebody praying somewhere, and, or Facebook, you know, this, that, and, and then you find, I find, when I don't stay in the Bible, don't read, I get irritable. You know, it's like when you don't eat, you get irritable. Huh? You read, you'll find God softening your spirit. Yeah, softening your spirit. You can smile even at the storms. So, where do I get the evidence? Specific promises. Secondly, I've got to find general promises. General promises. For example, this might be a little bit heavy too for you to understand, but anyway, I'm going to say it anyway. Daniel chapter 9, the scripture says, verse, verse, in the first year of Darius, son of Xerxes, a Mede by descent, who was made ruler over the Babylonian kingdom, and Daniel was one of the subjects in that land, higher up. So he, in the first year of his reign, in the first year of that guy's reign, I, Daniel, understood from the scriptures. See what can happen when you get into the text? You un he understood from the scriptures according to the word of the Lord given to Jeremiah, the prophet, that the desolation of Jerusalem would last 70 years. And it was like almost the time where that thing was up. And so he decided to turn to the Lord and he pleaded with him in prayer and supplication and petition and fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And he's saying to the Lord, Lord, I pray, bring, bring to pass this... Um, this redemption and, and ministry and deliverance for, for our city. Do you understand that when you read scripture, you will understand in general terms, for example, um, healing, you know, in the text is yours. I'm the Lord who heals you. Um, uh, I will put none of these disease, diseases upon you, for I am the Lord who heals you. And says, if you, if you pray, seek my face, I will do this and do the other. And then, of course, Jesus himself says, don't worry about what you can eat, what you're going to wear, how it's going to be. Don't worry about it, but pray about it. Didn't he say that? So you have to go there to the text and find general promises and pray. Now, I was not even, I was barely in the Lord when I started crying out to him for so many things. You, you know what? If you're looking to some people to help you, it's not going to come that way. Nobody's just going to come and give you something. But you have a God. You know, I still say that even now. I have a God. People are discounting that one fact that I have a God. Thirdly, I said... Um, Promises of the Lord, specific promises, general promises, and that thirdly, prophecy. Prophecy. What if you get some word over your life? People take that, make it number one. That shouldn't be number one. It's number three. This prophet. When you get it, if you get it, and if it's a legitimate one, then if it, what does resonate about that prophecy with you? What about the prophecy that resonates or moves you or motivates you? then if you feel like that, then it's probably what God has chosen for you. But a lot of the time when people receive something, they're like, what is that? I don't know what that is. So you would find when God speaks to you, 
it will resonate with you. It will, it will move you. And so you take that as evidence. We're talking about evidence. It's not saying you must now lock your house, sell your house, whatever, take the car, go to the mission field. It's not saying that at all. Somebody, I remember one time somebody was asking me, I feel like I've got this prophecy from this guy, and I'm, I'm now going to sell up my businesses, this, that, and the other. I really am not sure. I called you this morning to talk to me about that, to kind of help me. It was in Cape Town. Then I said, I tell you what, you're not, you're not, I'm trying to find out what word I actually gave him. Um, you're not obligated, here's the word. I said, you're not obligated to listen to that. You're not obligated if you don't know for sure. Because God, if he wants you to do something, he will have to make sure. You're not obligated to listen to anything that you're not sure about. Do you understand? I can just come and tell you, you know what, you're this, you're going to be doing that, you know, and get you excited, and you go home, and nothing resonates with you, and then you want to sell things and go and do it. No, 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 no. God is obligated to make clear, especially if it's a directional word, I've got to make it very clear to you. Leave this, go there. I've got to be very clear. So, Special promises, specific promises, general promises, a prophetic word, and then fourthly, good desires. Sometimes it's just a desire in your heart, good feelings that is supported by a general principle, supporting uh, principles in Scripture. These are like longings created by the Spirit. They're all good, by the way, good things. Look at it in chapter uh, 37, Psalms 37, 4 and 5. Delight yourself in the Lord. What is delight? That's what I'm saying. Praying in the word, you delight yourself in doing whatever God wants. Then he says, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. See, people take this last part and make it the A main part. That is the B part. The A part of that text is what? Delight yourself in the Lord. Delight yourself. Be, let the Lord delight you. Enjoy him. Enjoy his word, do all of the other stuff. And then what's going to happen, as you do that, God puts the desires in your heart to be this or that or the other. He shall give you the desires of your heart. That's how it works. And then 5 says, commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will do it. I tell you what, that's not just being glib, trust in him, trust in God. No, it, he is very smart. He's the smartest person I know. And when you commit something to him, he goes to work almost immediately. Almost immediately he goes to work. And then he tries to figure out how best this thing must be done for you. And at the same time, he'll kill quite a few birds with one stone and he'll work out a plan how you can best get that. Knowing that it will not kill you, not hurt you, all of that. He won't give you a snake when you ask for fish. Hmm? So good desires. God will give you the desires of your heart. How do you see yourself? What would you like to see? Have you got a bucket list of desires? Hmm? Write it down. Pray that thing. God could have put these desires in your heart. There are some, some things that you desire sometimes is not evil, is evil, right? Somebody else's husband or something like that. Well, I desire that. Or, you know, some rubbish thing like that. I don't want to talk about that, but that sometimes we think, oh, and I said, oh, oh, God. One, one lady, old lady, old auntie, she said to, said to us pastors one time, I don't know why it is. I love this person. I love them so much. I have such a love for them. Of course, he's single too, but he's young. He's like 30 years younger than he, her, and she wanted him. He doesn't know about it. He doesn't know anything about it. She just like wound herself up in that thing. She died without him. <laughs> you know, you know what? You can desire anything in the world, right? But a lot of them are not God's desires. 
Do you understand? But when you delight yourself in the Lord, He will put things in your heart that, you know what, you think, wow, to pastor a church, I don't know, some people might think, what? Yeah, that those things come from God. Hmm. Go to God. Fifthly, and lastly, circumstances. And all the circumstances that come your way are like setups by God. God is setting you up. Let's look at this one text quickly in, in uh, Mark 5. It's about the woman with an issue of blood. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. You bleed one uh, couple of days a month. That's a terrible thing, right? Imagine. Um, not one month. Not one year. 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors. She must have been very frail. Lost all the energy and ions and whatever else that's there in the blood. She spent everything. Yet, instead of getting better, she grew worse. She might have cried a lot to the Lord. And when she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. Here's the punchline. You might not get it, but when you read the scripture very carefully, God will show you some things. She said, because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I'll be healed. Where on earth did she get that evidence? How did she get that? Because she thought. That is my point this morning. That thoughts will come to you. She thought, possibly while she's still there bleeding on her bed, and she was not supposed to leave her house because it's an unclean thing. To even go out of the house or you touch somebody unclean in those days. If they only knew, that's why she was afraid when she was found out. If I touch his clothes, she thought, what a thing that is. Who would give you a thought like that? Go there, see if you can touch his cloak. When you touch his clothes, you're going to get healed. Do you understand what I'm saying about evidence? That's evi God is giving you the evidence. He is putting it in your hands. He's putting it in your mind. Now, if you're not delighting yourself in the Lord, you're, you're always gossiping about other people, you're saying this about your brother or sister, you're not delighting yourself, you, you're going to find there's no word going to come by. You've got to learn how to delight yourself in the Lord. That you'll find. If I can touch his clothes, I'll be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped. Of that 12 years constant bleeding she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering everything just dried up suddenly she felt it at once Jesus also felt it he realized that power had gone out from him and he turned around to the crowd and said hey who touched my clothes and Jesus kept looking around and asking the question and then the disciples said you see the people crowding around you they all were jostling and touching him and pulling and pushing but one touched very differently. One had a very different touch. We can all come to church like this. We can all sing a raise a hallelujah. But a few of you could really raise a hallelujah. That gets him. That gets God's attention. You know, I love you, man. Believe that. Believe it. You see the people crowding, and you're asking, who's touch? Who touched? What does this? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet, and trembling with fear. Why fear? Because she was terrified. They're going to say, everyone is unclean because you touched us. She was crawling on her feet. Don't touch a person's cloak without getting down there. And then he said to her daughter, your faith, your faith, the evidence you got has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. So life is a setup by God. We have to pay attention to the signs. I got another sermon to preach now, but I, I don't want to go. You'll have finished, I can see. 
finish before I start. Right? We'll see if we can finish it next week. God bless you, man. Let's stand. How do gifts operate? How do gifts operate? In the same way. In the same way. You hear the Lord, and the thought is sometimes like a fleeting thought. What's a fleeting thought? You go like this. And then you have to be awake to pick it up. And then you have to have the faith to believe that that is something that God wants to say. So you and I need to learn, pick it up. And so I'm going to call upon you. And on Tuesday nights, we would study these kinds of things. So I'd like you to really be successful, you know, in ministry. Ministry is not only standing here, by the way. This is the only one very small part of it, this. People think this is romantic. Yeah. This honeymoon don't last long. But you and I are, 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 are right in the front line of the battle trying to do stuff. This week we gather again. Come, let's delight ourselves in the Lord. Amen. And when the scriptures are coming, some of them you're going to get now um, as we speak. The scripture for this week. Go and read that thing. Figure out what God is trying to say to you. Make a note. Become diligent. And then pretty soon, not long, pretty soon, you will find God taking a sword and giving it to you in your hand, in your mouth, from time to time. Especially when you're going through circumstances in your life that's not working. Let me pray. Some of you have blood conditions that don't want you to come out. You have a blood condition. I just had that thought go up in my mind now. We are talking about it. And you know that some, you're bleeding a lot or you're bleeding uh, for a while now. I want to pray for you. Put your hand on yourself and say to the Lord, Here I am, Lord. I want to touch you. I want to touch you. Spirit of the Lord, I ask that you would come here this morning and heal every condition every blood condition in the bodies of our people. And sometimes guys bleed. Guys bleed because of some issue internally. It could be ulcers. It could be, it could be all kinds of other things. Don't ignore blood issues. Don't ignore it. But I'm, I'm hoping God will heal you. So let's look to him. I pray today in Jesus' name that every single person with a blood condition heal, I pray. Be healed, I say. Be healed in Jesus' name. I come against every disease that is found in the blood today. Be healed, I say. Be healed. Free your people. Free them, Lord. For those that have less iron in the blood, I say be healed. May God replenish all the minerals that you need in your blood. Everything that you need today. Lord, I pray. I'd like to see, Lord, your work as you said as you did in this woman's life, immediately she felt in her body that everything was dried up. I'm asking you today in Jesus' name, Father, do it to your people. Let us hear about it. Be glorified, Lord, sovereignly healing your people wherever they may be. I thank you for your work, Lord. I thank you for your work. And I pray, Father, that you would give us the evidence this week, the things that we are praying about. Lord, I pray that thought, that seed, 
that you would put in us would bring a harvest. Even if it's 30-fold, 60-fold, or 100-fold, whatever, Lord, I pray for your hand upon us. I pray, Father, that we would be a people replenished, filled. Because you, Lord, are our provider. You are Jehovah Jireh. You are God who gives us an abundance. I pray, Father, let it rain upon your people. Let it rain upon your people. I pray, satisfy us good things, I pray. Each one, each one, Lord, as we cry out to you, our hope is in you, Lord. So we love you, we thank you, we bless you for the work that you will do. We thank you. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen. Come pick up your...